بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله والصحابة والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى قيام الساعة أما بعد Indeed all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He alone is the one who deserves to be praised and worshipped and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger after whom there is no more messenger to come his family, his companions and all those who follow them in righteousness until the hour is established my dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah Ramadan is here as uh, you know as of this evening most of us if not all of us will Insha'Allah, be coming to the masjid for Salat al-Taraweeh. Tomorrow we will be the first day of fasting. Now, obviously, like everything else, there is wisdom behind the institution of fasting. Allah the Exalted does not do anything without wisdom or reason. So Allah the Exalted does not amuse Himself. You and I, when we get bored or we have free time, we do things to simply amuse ourselves for the fun of it. But God the Exalted is far removed from behaving in this way. Because doing things for fun without purpose is incompatible with the nature of Allah the Exalted. And this is why Allah tells us in the Quran in Surah Al-Mu'minun Am hasibtum Afa hasibtum annama khalaqnakum abathan wa annakum ilayna la turja'oon fata'ala Allahu al-malik al-haq Allah says, do you people think that we created you Abathan, without any purpose or design or reason or wisdom that is simply for play or amusement and that you will not be brought back to us this part of the ayah brothers and sisters and that you will not be brought back to us informs us that this is why there is purpose to our lives because why else would we go back to Allah if there is no purpose to life. Because there is purpose, we're going back. And we're going back, why? For Him to judge us, hold us accountable. And if He's going to hold us accountable, then there must be some purpose to this life. Then Allah says in the next verse, فَتَعَالَ اللَّهُ الْمَلِكُ الْحَقِّ So, exalted. Ta'ala literally means to be high above, far away from. Exalted is Allah, Al Malik Al Haq, the true, the one true King and controller of the universe. In this, what this verse means is that Allah is exalted from doing anything without aim or purpose, and that's why it should be one of the core belief of every Muslim that whatever Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has ordered or prohibited or encouraged there is good in it there is there is wisdom in it we may or may not understand or know that wisdom we may or may not understand the wisdom and sometimes we may not know the wisdom and then as the years go by we come to hear of the wisdom or understand it but every one of us must have that conviction that whatever Allah the exalted has ordered or prohibited, there is wisdom in it. Because Allah does not do anything without wisdom or reason. And so the institution of fasting is no exception. It, is, it was instituted for a reason. That reason is explained in the Quran when Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ O ye who believe, Fasting has been made compulsory upon you as it was made compulsory on those before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That perhaps you may develop taqwa. 
consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is one, uh, perhaps the most important objective of the institution of fasting. But brothers and sisters, we need to pay attention to what taqwa is. Because the reality of taqwa is such that a person just doesn't go through Ramadan as sort of a habit. So when Ramadan ends, everything ends. Excuse me. Taqwa is different. Taqwa actually, you know, the, the end result of taqwa is a change in how a person perceives things. So your mind, your, your, you know, your mental attitude changes. Let me share with you you must have heard this before, so let it serve as a reminder for all of us. This uh, definition of taqwa given by Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu. When Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was the Khalifa, he once asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab, what is taqwa? And Ubay said to him, have you ever walked on a path that was full of thorns? And Omar said to him, yes, I have done so. And Ubay asked him, what did you do? When you walked on that path full of thorns, what did you do? He said, shamartu thumma jtahattu. Shamartu means I gathered my clothing around me. Because you know, when you're walking on a path, when you have these thorn bushes or plants, any loose clothing that's flying at the side could easily get snagged on the thorns. So to protect your own clothing, you have to gather it around you. Nothing should be flying about, nothing loose. So Omar radiallahu anhu said, Shamartu, that's what I did. I gathered my clothing around me. Thumma ijtahadtu. Ijtahada means to work hard. Ijtahada yajtahidu, so the person is a mujtahid, means to work hard. And that's why the scholars who are classified as mujtahideen or mujtahidun, this is the root it comes from. People who work hard in their research. When a question or issue is posed to them, they do research. Until finally they arrive at a conclusion so they can give fatwa. So he said, I gathered my clothing around me and then I worked hard. Ijtahadtu. Worked hard in what? in carefully selecting where I was, where I would place my feet. Because if you gather your clothing around you, but you were still not careful about where you were placing your feet, you can still get hurt from the thorns. You can step on them and get hurt. And Ubay radiallahu anhu said to him, Dhaka taqwa. He said, that is taqwa. Subhanallah. Notice, the awareness that he had, Omar ibn al-Khattab, as, as he was walking on the path, resulted in him taking certain actions. And that's what taqwa is all about. It's an awareness that inspires or motivates actions. Not just an awareness alone, mind you. Because you can be aware that you're walking on this path, but if you're not careful, you can still get hurt. So it's an awareness that results in certain actions that serve to what? To protect you. And, he, and Ubay said to him, that is taqwa. That awareness you have, which leads you to do certain actions. And Allah says about fasting and the institution of fasting, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That perhaps you may develop taqwa. That awareness that will result in you performing and doing certain things. So as we fast in Ramadan, let us, you know, measure our progress. Are we becoming more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And one of the measures is, are our actions changing? Are we even, you know, in a small way doing good or more good? And are we even in a small way, you know, trying to avoid things that we should, we need to avoid? We can measure that. Are we developing the attitude of even when you know certain ideas and thoughts come to our minds that we intentionally or deliberately shift or try to shift the thoughts to something else that is good 
We push the bad thoughts out of our minds. We can could, we could measure the progress every day. But in addition to this, there are other objectives of fasting. And the other one is, or another one is learning self-control, which is in itself related to taqwa. Because with the awareness that we have, which should lead to action, part of the action we should, we should uh, be performing is self-control. Learning to control our desires. Learning to control our likes and dislikes. Because fasting is about the willingness to restrict desires and passions for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the objectives is to teach us that we can actually control our desires. We don't have to be slave to our desires. We can actually be the masters of our desires. And so every day that we fast, and we're tempted to do this and tempted to do that, and we resist the temptation, especially as the day progresses and you get hungry and thirsty. We resist the temptation to eat and drink. We're learning that we can control these urges, even though we do feel hungry and we do feel thirsty. We learn that we can control these urges. And not only that, brothers and sisters, but that in controlling them and resisting them, it's not the end of the world. We haven't died. I was hungry, yes, but I didn't eat and I didn't die. I should learn this. Another uh, objective of fasting is for us to give us a chance to experience in sort of a direct way how the people who are less fortunate feel and the life that they have to live. Now the feeling alone is not really the objective. The objective is to help them. But how best to get someone or to get others to genuinely help others? The best way is to have these people experience even to a, a little bit or a little way what these people who are, who are less fortunate experience. So when we fast and we become hungry and we're thinking, you know, Oh, I'm going to eat this and I'm going to eat that for, 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 for iftar. No, we should push those thoughts out of our mind. And what we should call to mind instead is the, the millions of people around the world who are displaced and who are starving. They don't have enough to eat. Often we contemplate what I'm going to eat for iftar. And we have in mind all these nice foods. And, but we need to think about our brothers and sisters around the world who not only do they, they do not have enough to eat, but they don't even know when they're going to eat some of them. They have no choices. Whatever it is they get to eat, they have to eat. So one of the important objectives is to soften our hearts is to make us caring about those around us. Not just in word, but also in deed, that we do something about it. Remember, taqwa is not just the awareness, right? It's doing something uh, with that awareness. Or that awareness leads to actions. So experiencing how they feel should not just be this sort of theoretical exercise, but it should lead to something concrete. We should do something about it, even in the smallest of ways. Even if it is in the smallest of ways. You know, developing and nurturing empathy for others, caring about others. And that's why, brothers and sisters, it is very sad, but it happens. Often the masajid, and even in our homes, we have iftar. And yet, despite the fact that there are hundreds of thousands of people who are starving, we waste a tremendous amount of food in Ramadan, of all times. Of all times. We have not developed a consciousness that taqwa. We shouldn't waste. It's, it's plain and simple. Out of Ramadan, wasting is haram. It's not allowed. But it's worse in Ramadan because by fasting, when we experience hunger and thirst, we can appreciate the value of food. 
And the next step is to, is to now realize that there are others who don't have access to food or enough food. While we're wasting it, subhanAllah. Take it. If you can't eat it, if it's too much, take it home with you. The effort we spend not to waste the food will be rewarded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the intention, brothers and sisters, the intention to do what is good, to do what is right, and to avoid doing what is wrong, is in itself an ibadah, an act of worship. So, let us pay attention to this. This is a, perhaps a, a project that each one of us should embark on. That this Ramadan will cut down on our waste. Each one of us, as an individual, as individuals, right, should, should sort of make that resolve that I am not going to waste. I'm going to do my best, whether I do iftar at home or at the masjid, not to waste the food that I have. If I can't eat it out and it's too much, either I ask them to take out some, that may or may not be possible, but if it's not possible, then whatever is extra, take it home. I know, sometimes we don't like to eat food in the fridge and so on. But for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, brothers and sisters, for the sake of our brothers and sisters, the millions of them around the world who don't have access to food, can we not make that little sacrifice? Eat the food tomorrow, warm it up, put it in a microwave, put it on your stove, warm it up, eat it. With that awareness that you're doing this as an appreciation for the, the, the gift of food that Allah has blessed us with. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless all of us and that he would help us and guide us to achieve these objectives of fasting. As you can see, if we can achieve these objectives, then our world will suddenly be a better place for everybody. You and I will become better human beings, and the people around us, the society around us will become a better place as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to be agents of good change in ourselves and in our society. And may he cause us not to be uh, agents of changes that will bring about negative things in our own lives and in, in, in the society. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this month of fasting easy for us. And may He also accept our fasting, our prayers, our du'as, all our good deeds. And may He help us to avoid the things that are sinful and the things that are evil. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.